number six, downsize. Sell, <laughs> sell it all before you come. I laugh because this is such a... We didn't do that. We did, but I mean, imagine coming from like a four or five bedroom house into like 300 square feet. It's a, it's a big change and you have to get rid of a lot of things that you think you need, that you don't need. Unfortunately for us, we have a storage unit, so... Yep, it's that thing that you always plan on getting rid of, but for some reason it charges your car every single month like clockwork. <laughs> So we have more downsizing to do, but yeah. seriously, try to get rid of everything. I think if you're in an apartment situation, so it's a lot easier because you have less, but if you're not going to use it within the next six months to a year, just get rid of it. There is like no space for that stuff. What's nice too is once you come here, you're going to be working in a lot smaller space. You need functional items that can be multi-purposed. So a lot of the stuff you have right now is not going to work out for you anyway. Yeah, so get so rid of it. Donate it. Sell it. If you can't sell it, donate it. And then try to buy furniture that works for your apartment. It can have double use, like a chair that has storage underneath yep. or like a bench, something like that. Totally. Moving on to something that oh, I need to follow myself. Number seven, control your food spending. It's not easy. Your struggle is so You got real. temptation like... Buy Pizza. me, eat me, Girls. eat me, eat one it. dollar, but it's not really one dollar. <laughs> no, it's one dollar plus the extra appetizer, maybe you want to drink on the side, and then you're spending 50 bucks on lunch. Easy. This is a good time to talk about meal prepping and cooking on your own because this is uh, probably the best place to <laughs> go into debt. Like, don't put food on credit cards, like, come on guys, yeah. self-control. It's gonna be hard because you step outside, food is there. You get on your phone, like Grubhub and Seamless. It's easy to rationalize not cooking. And I will mention how expensive drinks are. So if you are one to go out on the, the weekend or weeknights, hey, whatever. Um, pre-game. Pre-game, yeah, because it's expensive. It's like, expensive. real expensive. I think mixed drinks average $10, $15, and yeah. beers maybe $6 yeah. to $8. Yeah. That's I like know, that's what we paid for a six pack in Georgia. Yeah. So. And then of course, I guess the worst factor is uh, it's unhealthy. Yeah. You it's gain a lot of weight. I mean, New York is definitely somewhere where you're walking around a lot, you're getting some cardio, but it starts to add up. Um, eating just fatty, greasy things all the time. So we're trying to wean off the habit ourselves and just stopping at our local fruit stands, buying food. Smoothies. Yeah. They're bomb. Yeah. And fruit stands here are actually pretty inexpensive compared to Georgia. So yeah, don't eat out every day. Pick a day. Bad. Pick a day and <laughs> stick to it. Yeah. Number eight. Number eight. Become a hustler. 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 Let's face it. This is not a city to be slow. Uh, or passive. Passive, lazy, mm -hmm. procrastinator. Unrealistic. Not gonna, I mean, you can live here, but you're not going to fit in um, very well. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> You'll pop you off the streets living. There's a right? few things as a New Yorker, once you live here, you start to realize. One is that there's always a better price on it. Whatever you're buying, just know that you don't want to pay the, uh, the, the, the tourist prices. Yeah. And also shopping online. We figured out that buying a lot of the like uh, toiletries that we need, like furniture and accessories, that stuff can all be bought online, get it on Amazon, yep. it's at your front door, and you avoid the crazy like New York taxes and... You, you remember trying to transport stuff on the subway, it's, it's not fun. You see it's people not. carrying big items to the subway and... It's not a good luck. Yeah, so it's... just get it delivered for free. I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? Use your resources. Yeah. Part of, I guess, being a hustler is being aware of your surroundings at all times. Um, I definitely am. I'm always, like, looking head on a swivel. I'm always, like, listening out of one ear with the headphone. It's just something that you'll get used to once you live in a city like this. Just being aware of your surroundings. So you may run into friendly people, which we have, but just be wary of doing certain things that you would normally do at home. Like, hey, can I call someone on your phone? You're like, sure. Don't Not a good do idea. That. You won't get your phone. <laughs> They'll Don't probably eat. run, you know? Number nine. Nine. We're almost there. Explore the city. You moved here for a reason. Go explore it. So something that we thought was really important when we first moved here was to uh, take a moment out of the day, the stressful days after the move, and actually go out and go uh, enjoy the city. Yeah, So get to know our neighborhood. Going to, out to eat, we experienced yeah. some of the restaurants, so, not something you can do on a regular basis, but when we first got here, we knew that was the only time where we wouldn't be working, and 
So, um, yeah, take advantage whenever you can. You have a day off. Try to take your dog and go out. It's really hard to not be a, a homebody, especially when you're in a city where you don't know anyone. You're like, I'm not going out with friends. I'm just going out. But sometimes just popping in your headphones and getting on the train and seeing where it takes you, it just makes you a lot more, not only cultured, but knowledgeable about where you live. Uh, when, when we lived in Atlanta, I really didn't know anywhere but like our, our little bubble. town. Yeah, yeah, which was really bad. I didn't know any, any directions. I suck at directions. <laughs> Well, in the city, there's tons of free stuff to do. So going to the park, obviously, there's free shows that pop up. Yeah. Uh, there's sports clubs that you see. Like if you play basketball, they've got groups that just meet up and play basketball. And we've got so many parks. Like the park is free. Yeah. It's beautiful. Go enjoy your city. Yeah. It's gonna be important and make you not resent the move. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most beneficial reasons to get around is for networking. Uh, we've lived here for how long now? Four, five, four months? Yeah, four months. four months. It's crazy. Yeah. And we're starting to meet people. We have people's phone numbers now. They're calling us up on a Friday night to hang out, and that would not have happened if we stayed in this apartment just together. Yep. And like, ooh, so sad we left home. You got to get out there, and it's crazy, but you can network everywhere. We went to a party last night in Brooklyn, and Dustin was able to network with people that, like, he was going to work with eventually. It's kind of a small world. It's it a lot of people, but you're running to the same people over and over again. It's kind of... It's like a weird Seinfeld episode. You just keep running into people that you think you'll never see again. Totally. So last yeah. night, we went out to Brooklyn from Manhattan. There was a group of guys on the train. Oh, yeah. We stayed out for maybe four hours. We're coming back. Would you believe that the same group of guys got back on our same exact train in the same car? Crazy. That's, that's, that's an example of coincidences happening all the time. Last but not least, number 10. Have a plan B. Have a plan C, D, and E, because things are going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like we're saying train lines over here, but it's real. Yeah. Have a plan, and then have another plan for that plan. Totally. You have to kind of have a mind frame, like, if I don't, then it won't. So if I don't do this, it's not going to happen. And once you have that mindset, you really, I mean, you become a New York hustler. I can't explain it. That's it. <laughs> you just become a New York hustler, man. The excuses, they get you about this far, and... Really. No one feels bad for you here. Like, look at, I mean, you'll see if you ever come here and visit. The homeless are everywhere. They're shaking cups. And you'll see how many locals walk right on by. And it's because everyone is on their own hustle. Just know, nothing is promised to you. Even if you have a job, you're like, oh, it's going so well. Second interview, I think they like me. Nah, go, they could go draw interview you somewhere right else. Make yes. so sure that you're multi-interviewing. That's what he was doing, like relay oh, really? interviews. Like, okay, I had one interview with this company. Monday, I'll have one with this other company. And he was like in between four interviews at one t at one point. Yes. Go, uh, go to three, four interviews a day if you can. Yeah, find a way. I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's a sense of empowerment, I think, to move so far, and then you you become a new person. You're like, I can't fail, like period, I can't. It's not. It's I don't wanna be homeless. All right guys, so that concludes our video with our top 10 tips when moving to New York. The lessons learned hard by us. Yes. So let our pain be your gain. <laughs> and uh, we would love to yeah. hear yours. So if so, you got any other suggestions, there's a comment section, we wanna make sure we hear those. Yeah. And, and I think that's it, guys. Yeah. Of course, don't forget to rate, <laughs> comment and subscribe below yes and we'll have another video out next week we'll see you guys then bye